Hey there, today we are going to talk about average rate of change. And average rate of change is just another term really for slope. So when you studied slope in previous courses, there were a few different ways that you could look at it. It was almost always defined to be m equals, that is the variable or letter chosen to represent slope. So you might remember y equals mx plus b, slope intercept form, things like that. So some ways that we find slope, first of all, it is a rise over a run. So we will look at how we calculated that, given maybe a visual or graphic interpretation of some data. We also can look at slope as change in output over change in input. So I'm going to write that two ways. And so as you can see, I wrote delta y, that triangle right there is a delta, which really means change in. So it's our change in output over our change in inputs. So we're looking at how is something impacted over a given time interval, for example. So the other way that you might remember that might be a little bit more familiar to you is the change in y could also be represented as y sub 2 minus y sub 1. And our change in x could be represented as x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Not necessarily important which point you call 1 or 2, just as long as you're staying consistent within those coordinate pairs. So you might have seen slope represented different ways. Um, we'll look at all of those here below just as a little refresher. Um, but average rate of change being slope or the measure of how a function is changing according to its input, which could be over a time interval. So let's take a look at a few of these examples. So here's the first one. Determine the average rate of change and I don't know if these points are all that obvious, but here's one right here at 2, 2, and here's another point at 4, negative 4. And so we're finding the average rate of change between these two points. So that would be as if I graphed a line that connected these two points and asked you what is the slope of the line that would connect these two points? What is the average rate of change? So let's say you leave your house and you drive to school, and maybe it's a 20 minute drive, and maybe over that 20 minute period of time, you might have averaged 32 miles an hour. That would be your average rate of change. Did you go 32 miles an hour the entire time? Probably not. Maybe you went a little slower and a little faster at times, but overall you might have averaged 32 miles an hour. It's kind of what we're talking about. So this average rate of change will connect these two points, 2, 2, and 4, negative 4. And we can do this by just physically counting our rise over our run. Because again, our slope is a change in output over a change in input. And it doesn't matter which point we start with. So let's say we start with 2, 2. I go down 1, down 2, down 3, down 4, down 5, down 6 units. So that would be negative 6 because I went down. And I'm heading to the right 2, so I would say my slope is negative 3. Which I can also see because that does look like a negative sloping line, if you remember that. Or I could have started with this point 4, negative 4, and then I rise up 6, so that would look like a positive 6. But then to get to that next point, I go to the left 2, which would make my denominator negative 2. And that would also be negative 3 for my slope. So either way, either point I start with, I should get the same slope. Also, if you wanted to, you could have written these points out as coordinate pairs 2, 2, and we said 4, negative 4, and I could have used the formula that I will use on the next problem. It's also important to note that when they give you this interval here, they are telling you the starting input value and ending input value that you are looking between. So I was looking at a starting point of x equals 2, because this is a little x right here, and an ending value of x equals 4. So wherever that crosses my function, 
those would be where my points lie. Okay, so just algebraically here, determining the average rate of change of a function, if we did not want to look at the visual, if we only wanted to use the formula for slope, let's take a look at how that works. It does not really matter which point you call the first and second. So let's just say I call this one x1, y1, in this point x sub 2, y sub 2. Then here I go. The change in output, so y sub 2, which is 4, minus my y sub 1, which is 5, and I put the parentheses there just in case, and then divided by, here's my x sub 2, which is negative 2, minus my x sub 1, which is 1, so 4 minus 5 is negative 1, negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3, so I do get a slope of 1 third. This is positive, so if I plotted those two points, just on a Cartesian plane here, 1, 5 would be about right here, and negative 2, 4 would be about right here, so I should see that that's a positive slope connecting the two points. And then lastly, you could be given data, right, or a table here. So what's important to note in a table is that usually this data is representative of something. So our output and our input have meaning. And it's important to remember that our slope is change in output over change in input. So whenever we're going to label this, we would want the label for the output in the numerator and the label for the input in the denominator. So maybe it's something like if my y, if this was a temperature in degrees Fahrenheit, then I would say degrees Fahrenheit per maybe day or per hour, whatever this is measured in. Maybe it's dollars per day. Maybe it's beats per minute. Okay, but it's always change in output over change in input. Okay, so given a table is really no different, only when you're asked to find the average rate of change, they're going to ask you over a given interval. So you need to know which points you're using here. So I'm going to use the 1 with the negative 14 as its output. That's my starting value. And then you're ending your interval at 2, so that would be 2 comma negative 10.9. So my slope would be negative 10.9 minus negative 14 all over 2 minus 1. And I'll just write this a little bit better here. That's negative 10.9 plus 14 all over 1, which I don't know that I need to write over 1. But that's fine. So I should get 3.1. So maybe this was degrees Fahrenheit and days. So this means that on average between day one and day two, just between that interval, I increased 3.1 degrees Fahrenheit per day. Again, just within that interval. I would have a different average rate of change if I looked, for example, in a different interval. So I hope this helps give you a refresher on average rate of change that will be used in calculus.